All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the second part of the show, we are going to talk about this Stefan Diggs trade now from the Bills' perspective. Um, so let's get into that. Now, when I was talking about the top teams in the AFC, I did not put the Bills there. And that's because of not just the Diggs trade, but just a lot of things that they've done in the offseason. They had to let go of a lot of guys. You saw Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, Mitch Morse, their center. They had to let go of some key guys uh, on both sides of the ball. You also saw Gabe Davis leaving as well. He went and signed with Jacksonville. So the Bills are going to look a little different next year. Well, a lot different. And this draft is going to be very important because they have, I think, 10, 11 draft picks. So they're going to have to add to their receiving core through the draft. Again, Tyler Boyd is still out there. He's a possibility. But I know I just love that I keep talking about him. But they're going to have to do something to bolster this receiving core back up now with Diggs being traded. And, yeah, right now I can't put them in as one of the top teams in the AFC. Now they have Josh Allen of course, and Josh Allen, since they got Stephon Diggs, really put himself into that top tier of quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, Patrick Mahomes has separated himself. He's in a tier of his own. With the championships especially, he's in a tier of his own. But I did want to highlight what I saw on uh, CBS's Instagram. So, well, first, he tweeted something replying to somebody Somebody tweeted, does Josh benefit from having a top-tier receiver? Yes. Is he essential to his success? No. And Diggs responded, you sure, with a question mark. And now Diggs was traded. So they posted a graphic of Josh Allen's numbers before Stephon Diggs got there and once Diggs became a Buffalo Bill, was traded to the Bills. He was acquired back in 2020. And the Vikings, well, they went and got Justin Jefferson in the draft. So that worked out for them. So in 2018 and 2019, Josh Allen, completion percentage, 56.3%. Yards per attempt, 6.6. And his touchdown to interception ratio, 30 to 21. Now, you go to 2020 2020 to 2023 with Diggs now. 65.5% completion percentage. 7.4 7.4 yards per attempt, and his touchdown to interception ratio 137 to 57. Josh Allen, once they got Diggs, was a different quarterback. Now you also could credit Brian Dable as well, developing Josh Allen as well. Now, even with Diggs, Josh Allen started to revert back to what he was earlier in his career turning the ball over a lot more. And they made the switch with the offensive coordinators during the season. And that did kind of work out. The Bills actually were becoming more of a balanced offense. James Cook was getting more involved. Josh Allen didn't have to play hero ball. And that was nice. So, But now, with Diggs not being there anymore... What does that mean for Josh Allen? Is Josh Allen going to completely revert back to how he was before Diggs got there? But again, I went over Diggs' statistics during the season, and there were some games where, yeah, he really wasn't a non-factor. And the Bills were winning games. you got to remember, the Bills, they lost that tough game to the Eagles in overtime, and that looked like that was the end for them. That they just were not, they they, it was going to be too big of a deficit to overcome and make a run to make the playoffs. But they won every single game after that. They made the playoffs. They beat the Steelers. And they had their chance to beat the Chiefs. They couldn't get it done. And look at what the Chiefs had on offense. What Mahomes had to throw to. Besides Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice had a solid rookie season. The Chiefs were coming in. Their offense was struggling throughout the year. Travis Kelsey was banged up. All the drops that they had in crucial moments, whether it was Valdez Scanling, whether whether it was Kadarius Tony, the Chiefs still were able to find a way 
and get back to the Super Bowl and win it. The Bills, you still had Diggs. You had Gabe Davis. Well, actually, Gabe Davis didn't even play in the playoff game against the Chiefs. But this was the Bills' chance. And they just couldn't get it done. And now Diggs is gone. But this is something that has been boiling up for a while. Ever since the AFC Championship game loss, where Diggs was out there watching the Chiefs Chiefs celebrate, this is something that was in the making for a while. It's just, like I talked about in the first segment with, with Dan Graziano, Diggs would post something on social media, things would get settled out, things would work out, and we'd move on and he'd be a Buffalo Bill. But it's not the case. He's gone now. And maybe the Bills did the right thing because maybe they really, that decline was going to continue. And him maybe being a head case with the offseason drama, while he has value, trade him. Now, they got a 2025 second rounder out of him. Maybe they could have got something better. I don't know. But. There was a lot of factors into Diggs being traded. And it's just the latest of players to leave the Bills. Whether it's them releasing them or trading them. A lot of guys from this era where they're making the playoffs and they made the AFC Championship game and now they just couldn't get past the divisional round. A lot of these guys are gone now, so they got to revamp. And they bring in Curtis Samuel, another wide receiver. And this was, you know, with Diggs still on the team. Now he's not there. So is Curtis Samuel now the lead wide, the lead number one receiver? And they got a couple of nice tight ends. They still got Dawson Knox. You've got Dalton Kincaid, who you're going to continue to see improve. Still got James Cook. Khalil Shakir, he was playing really well down the stretch. But the Bills got to add. They got to revamp. They lost a lot of guys on defense. And, yeah, Diggs, it's going to have an impact, whether people say he was declining or not. Diggs is, Diggs is still a good receiver. But, again, there's a ton of receivers in this draft. Now, they're not going to get the top guys unless they somehow trade up, which I don't think that's going to happen. So... You could see them getting somebody in the late first round. That's probably what they're going to end up doing, whether it's that or they go defense. But I I, I think you could expect them going after a receiver. I mean, and again, they have a ton of picks. So that's probably the route they're going to go. But again, I don't really look at the Bills right now as one of the top teams in the AFC, and also the AFC East. That, it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be a slam dunk for who's going to win that. The Patriots are rebuilding. Right now we got to see what they, how they address the quarterback position in this draft. So, they're not really a part of that conversation. You got the Bills, the Dolphins, and the Jets. And right now, a healthy Jets squad, that team could definitely be the team that doesn't and wins the division. Because, again, the Bills are weaker. The Dolphins, they have question marks with Tua as their quarterback. And they had to make a lot of subtractions in the offseason on defense. Now, they've tried to fill those gaps. They, you know, they signed Shaquille Barrett. They signed Jordan Poyer. And again, we still have the whole draft. So I think you really have to make make a full assessment of everything once the draft is complete. But right now, the way everything is, I, I look at the Jets as the favorites or the Dolphins. But again, the Bills, they still have Josh Allen. And... I know I talked about 
what Josh Allen was before Diggs got there and once he was there. Well, now, what is he going to be like after Diggs, the post-Diggs era? He, yeah, he's a different quarterback than he was when he first got into the league. So, you could say, well, you're losing Diggs, so you're going to have to feel some impact. Yeah, but are we going to see the Josh Allen that he was before they got Diggs or or not? I mean, he was still t he's been turning the ball over even with Diggs. So but well again, we'll just have to wait and see. And again, you got a whole draft. So the Bills are definitely going to address the wide receiver position in this draft and and they'll figure it out. But what's going to happen now if the Bills don't finish with a good record? Is that going to be it for Sean McDermott? We'll see. But, yeah, this era of Bills football, I, I mean, these last couple of seasons, I don't know about, not really last year, but the previous two, people looked at the Bills as the favorites to maybe go to the Super Bowl. Or at least 2022, that was the year. Because they got off to that roaring start, first two games of the season. And they, uh, once again, knocked down the divisional round. You went from AFC Championship game to divisional round loss to the Chiefs, divisional loss to the Bengals, and then divisional loss to the Chiefs. Three out of the four years. Well, and the year before, well, 2019 they made it without Diggs. And they lost to Deshaun Watson. And they had a lead in that game. And then Deshaun Watson came back and they won that thriller. But with Diggs, the Bills lost three out of four to the Chiefs. And they also lost to the Bengals. And the Chiefs have won Super Bowls. They won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. It's It's tough. The Bills just could not get past the Chiefs, and home at home against the Bengals, they lost twenty-seven to ten. Yeah, it, what could have been? What could have been? But let me know what you guys think about the Bills. How do you see them approaching the draft? And where would you rank the Bills right now among the teams in the AFC after this uh, after this Diggs trade? Let me know in the comments. So when we come back from our Second break of the show, we are going to talk about Cam Hayward talking about Russell Wilson. Before we go into break, though, I just want to remind you guys once again to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the following link. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show. Makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker at the bottom of the show segment down below. So when we come back... From our second break of the show, we'll talk about the Steelers, talk about Cam Hayward, commenting on Russell Wilson's potential impact with the team. So that being said, stick around and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 